to all my friends, the soda bread is calling. So I am now mixing together four cups of flour, a quarter cup of sugar, a teaspoon of salt, and a teaspoon of baking powder. And that's done. Next, I'm going to cut in, this is half a stick of butter, four tablespoons or a quarter cup. Now, I think I said in the recipe to cut it in six, but the smaller you cut it up, the easier it's gonna to be to blend into your flour mixture. You can do this with a couple of knives, or if you have the pastry blender, that's a very handy thing to use. We don't wanna completely break down the butter. We do want to make it into quite small pieces. So I'll do this for a little bit. Takes a little arm muscling, but that's okay. We don't mind muscling. I think we're almost there. Now, if you had larger pieces, you would obviously not be almost there. Well, actually, I'm not quite there. We'll do a little more. Mix, mix, stir, stir. But as I said, if you have small pieces of butter, they're just gonna make everything puff up nicely. Okay. Next, we add to that a cup of dried cranberries. You may certainly use raisins or currants. Those are more traditional if we were in Ireland. I don't even know if they have cranberries in Ireland. Something to research. But I think since this is New England soda bread, New England Irish soda bread, that we're using dried cranberries. I love the color. I love that little pop of flavor. Okay, next. I have here a cup and a third of buttermilk. To that I add one egg. And a teaspoon of baking soda. If you don't know why it's called soda bread, it's not because it has like club soda or, you know, cola or something in it. It's because most of the leavening comes from baking soda, which makes it much faster than a yeast bread. So if you were in the old sod and happened to need some fast bread, this would be it. So we're gonna squinch that up with my little fork. Basically what I wanna do is, the egg is a good clue. If you see a lot of egg yolk, you know that you need to squinch more. I think we've squinched enough. Now we make a little well in the middle of our flour mixture. And we pour this in. Doo, doo, doo. There, good enough. Again, not mixing terribly well. Okay. We just wanna make sure that most of the flour gets liquid on it and vice versa. Then, the next step is not complicated, but we do it. And I probably should have mixed a little more, but that's all right. We turn this onto a floured board. You can see it's kind of a mess, but we'll be taking care of the mess. Come on, mess. Come to me, my melancholy mess. There we go, almost there. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. Then we knead this. The kneading is not as in normal bread. It is just to make it come together a bit. I'm probably gonna run out of time before I finish kneading, but I can tell you what we're gonna do in case we run out of time. We're gonna knead this till it kind of clumps together nicely. I can tell you, it feels very soft and smells very delicate and pretty on my knows. Um, I'm going to pretend that I've already kneaded. We're going to do one. So you separate into two mostly after kneading, but I'm going to knead a little more. Okay. You separate it into clumps and they're going to look better if you've kneaded more. Then I make two little loaves and they're really supposed to be rounded, but we're almost out of time. So forget rounding. You cut across in the middle of each round. 
Um, I, I think that's partly because of St. Patrick Day, Patrick converting Irish people to Catholicism, but I think it's also to make it just flatten it out and make it cook more evenly. And then I'm not going to touch these because I'm all flowery. I like to sprinkle little green shamrock sprinkles on top. You don't have to. You put it in a 375 oven for about 35 minutes and that's what you get. Happy St. Patrick's Day.